So a relationship is the way that two things are connected. Have you ever considered that maybe you need to change your relationship with food? That the way that you're connected to food is causing your inability or your problems with managing your weight and staying healthy long term. Hello, Wellness Warriors. Welcome to Mind Blowing Health and Wellness with Violet. The reason that I make these educational videos is to help you to understand that your physical health and mental health working well together is what creates that overall sense of well-being. If this is something that you're working on, subscribe because I make new videos every week. We turn to it when we're upset. We celebrate with it when we're happy. We treat food like a friend. And then we fight to keep it in our life. But what kind of food are we actually fighting to keep? Food isn't our friend. But the foods that we tend to turn to tend to be the high-carb foods that give us that dopamine hit and cause us to feel good when we're sad or to feel even better when we're happy. But in reality, what food is supposed to be is a building block and an energy source. And because we seem to have confounded these two pieces of information, food as a friend versus food as nourishment, people are getting into trouble. When we see food as a friend, any tasty, processed, whatever, will do because we're looking for a sensation in our mouth. We're looking for a taste and a feel, and we're not necessarily caring what that process, whatever, is doing to us internally. That's not what this is about. It's about what's happening here, not what's happening here. That is very short-sighted, and of course, gets us into trouble. Because when the carby garbage tastes good, we eat it, because the negatives that will happen are so far away, but they will happen. We don't pay attention to the weight gain, which doesn't take that long. We don't pay attention to the metabolic physiological issues that are being created. So pain, et cetera, that are being created in our bodies. Now, don't pay attention to, I think that's a strong word for the physical stuff, because often we don't know that those physical repercussions are coming from the carbohydrates that we're eating. But then what happens when we find out? So this is where food is your friend gets you in trouble. There are multiple people out there who are fully aware. The more carbs they eat, the more physical pain that they live. There are multiple people out there who are aware. The more carbs they eat, the more metabolic distress their body's in. And yet continue to eat these carby foods because of the emotional connection they have to this food friend. But this food friend isn't helping you at that point because it's not really a friend. It's food, and I hesitate to call this stuff food, but it's negative for your body. There is a dopamine hit that happens when we eat carbohydrates that we cannot ignore because it puts us in this addictive cycle with food, and then we are pushed to want to get it. Now, we've all lived this on some level or another, Again, a lot of us not really fully understanding and sometimes even joking about it. I remember calling myself a chocoholic, jokingly, but not jokingly, because I did know that when I ate chocolate, I got out of control. It's funny because you think, oh, I'm just not allowing my, I'm just, I'm just giving into myself. No, there was more happening there than I was actually aware of at the time, that there was an actual physical something happening that was pushing me to eat this chocolate even though in a health way, because chocolate, now we can't even call that food. It's not like I didn't know this is not healthy to have. And yet I was still having it, even in occasions where I wanted to lose weight, even in occasions where I thought I didn't need it. What is that? That's addiction. Now I know that. I didn't know it back then. But there are some of us who, even though we know that, we struggle with this idea that I actually now need to put my health first and figure out a way to allow myself out of this addictive behavior. We need to understand that addiction takes away our ability to make choices. If all I can see is this thing in front of me that's going to stop me from feeling this way, I'm not able to make a, a good decision at that point. And so when you finally get to the point where you have put down your carb addiction, Wellness Warriors, I'm encouraging you to not pick it up again. I'm encouraging you to understand how hard it was for you the first time that you went through the process of getting your carbs down to 20 or less. 
And I'm encouraging you to understand that when you allow yourself to eat excessive carbs again, you're reopening the addiction. And what do we know about addiction? When you step into it the first time and you get out, and it was super hard, if you get back in, it's even harder to get out because your best friend is back and you feel so great, even though you don't. And you feel so relieved, even though you're anxious and guilty. This is not helping you. Whenever I hear someone say, I can't give up bread, I can't give up chocolate, I used to say that, it helps me to understand that this is actually addictive talk because I'm telling myself I can't not eat something that I absolutely can not eat, right? I can put it down. I have, and I guarantee you that you can when you realize that this is addictive behavior you're engaging in. It's important for us to understand when an unhealthy food is controlling our behavior. When I see food as nourishment, a way to build my body and to fuel my body, it really does change what I accept to call food. Today, I do not accept to call chocolate cookies, uh, bread. I don't call that food. I call it sugar. This is what it is. And what building blocks am I getting from a cookie or candy for, the, for my body that's good for me? And I'm not getting anything good there. I remember when I was at work, I would watch people, you know, in the afternoon after we've had lunch and they're starting to get hungry again because, yeah, I remember watching people reach for chips. I would reach for chocolate. At the end of the day, it was all the same. Why were we not eating a proper meal at lunch so we could make it to supper? And it's because none of us understood what a proper meal was. Almost everyone I was seeing in there was having carbs for, for, for lunch, excessive amounts of carbs for lunch, including myself and then hungry, not even two hours later. When you eat carbs and your body has to quickly store them away, all the energy gets stored away too. And so therefore you are actually hungry and you run out and you eat again. And you probably eat more carbs because dopamine hit and that makes you feel good and you're chasing those carbs because when those carbs get put away, my brain also loses its access to that dopamine hit. And of course it wants it again. Let's be careful guys. I really feel like we need to understand processed foods better because a processed food is basically taking something that started off healthier than what you're going to eat, stripping it down, loading it back together with chemicals and sugar, and then saying this is equivalent to what you had before. It's not true. A processed boxed cereal is not as healthy as the grain that it was made from, first and foremost. Even though the grain, I think we, sh we know we shouldn't eat. But that processed food is not as healthy as that. Applesauce is not as healthy as the apples that it was made from. Again, not something that I'm encouraging you to eat. I'm just pointing it out. When we concentrate things and make them extra sweet, or when we strip away minerals and, and nutrition from things and then re-add it, it's not as healthy as the original. And what it ends up doing is it puts our body in the position where we are constantly chasing food because we eat the watered down version. We need more because we didn't get the energy that we needed. Not to mention that no matter what, we've still eaten something and whatever we ingest, our body has to do something with that. And what does our body tend to do? It tends to put it away as fat. The other day, I took a quick look at a protein bar. And what I noticed, and this was a protein bar, that's a regular one. It had 20 grams of protein, 29 grams of carbs, net carbs, and 8 grams of fat. In a bar that was 68 grams. Now, let's understand, 68 grams, I mean, it's a little bar, right? I'm going to eat that. Yes, I'm getting 20 grams of protein, but I'm also getting 29 grams of carbs, which is already more than what I should have had for my entire day in one bar, what is the chance that that's all I'm going to eat today? Very low. And if it was all I ate today, I wouldn't have gotten enough protein. I wouldn't have gotten enough fat. If I compare that to three ounces of steak, and the reason I'm choosing three ounces of steak is I want my protein number to stay the same. So I got the same protein number, but I have 17 grams of fat there. And this is not going to trigger fat storage. Do we understand that if I eat the protein bar, it's going to be stored as fat. But if I ate three ounces of steak, I would have got the benefit of the protein from the steak and the energy from the fat. If I actually had five ounces of steak, which is where I would have gone because that's if I was eating a meal, that's what how much I would have had. I would have had 37 grams of protein and 28 grams 
of fat and it still wouldn't trigger fat storage. We make the wrong choices because we're so focused on tasty and we've equaled sugary with tasty that we don't realize that there are better things that we could eat that taste delicious too and would give us better building blocks and better energy, cleaner energy. Fat is a cleaner energy for our body than carbohydrates. That's why carbohydrates are so strictly regulated. Don't get me wrong, fats are regulated too. But we can manage so much more fat coming in because it's a cleaner energy source. And just because I don't want people to think that I'm anti-vegetables. If I eat 20 grams of carbs or less in a day from healthy sources, now I'm talking about low glycemic vegetables and uh, salads, I'll still be in ketosis as long as I'm eating protein and fat to get my, the rest of my energy that I need for the day and to get the rest of the building blocks. If I try to only eat vegetables, there's a possibility that I'm now going to go over my carb count. And if I go over my carb count, I'm going to get kicked out of ketosis. And if I get kicked out of ketosis, then my body will be back to carb burning. Now, everybody needs to pay attention to what they're going to do. If you're living the low carb world, you're kind of probably cycling in and out of ketosis on the occasion, it's fine. What I'm trying to help everyone to understand is that if you eat 20 grams of carbs or less per day, the chance that you kick yourself out of ketosis is much less. Wellness warriors, I want you to focus your attention on fueling yourself appropriately, giving yourself the good building blocks that you need so that you can be healthy and the cleanest energy that you can to reduce inflammation, reduce oxidative stress, reduce all the issues that come from eating an unhealthy fuel source. And what's more important is that if you feel yourself correctly, you physically stop chasing carbs because you're not getting that dopamine hit. And if you find other ways to entertain yourself, now I'm talking about activities. I'm talking about crafting or music or some other entertaining something for you that you love to do. If you allow yourself to engage some other fun activity and put down this idea of food as fun, you will also put down the psychological chasing of food. You can do it. There are videos on the screen right here that are going to help you to further improve your mental and physical health. I want to thank you for watching Mind Blowing Healthy Wellness with Violet. Wellness Warriors, I'm always happy when you come back. I really can't wait to talk to you guys again next week.